All right, in the garage today, I had an idea for a project. So I thought I would give it a start. Um, this is something that I've had in my mind for quite a while. Um, it is a, a, a analog synthesizer, so a, a music synthesizer. So um, you play a note and make it sound funny, right? So I think what I want to do though, is I want to kind of take a certain spin on it. I want to use it as a tool to teach op amp circuits and not necessarily a tool to build a good uh, synthesizer. There's plenty of those out there. Um, if you've ever been to Music From Outer Space um, website, Music From Outer Space, go there. The guy's great. He's got all kinds of uh, DIY kits and everything. And um, I thought about buying one of those kits and using it as a training tool, but um, it's not really laid out the way that I want it. Um, and what I want to do is take it step by step. You know, there's oscillators and envelopes and noise and there's amplifiers and there's mixers and there's all kinds of uh, things as building blocks. And I want to I want to have a video per building block, okay? And then uh, get to a point where we have enough building blocks where we can look at a system. So we'll have to do a system design. How do we lay these things out? Um, the end goal will be to have a PC board that has a bunch of stuff on it and it will allow you to have a little thing that makes sound and most of the diy synthesizers i've seen they design them so they go into racks or they go into a little box and they have they have giant potentiometers on the front and they have really big patch cables and everything and, and i just don't i just i just don't I'm not excited about that. So what I want to do is I want to have a little PZ board that has all the little components of a synthesizer all on one board. And then all the jumpers will be done by uh, these little, uh, these little jumpers will be uh, little pins and you can, you can have little wires and you can jump things. And uh, so it'll be like a mini Moog. <laughs> it'll be a micro Moog. Maybe we can build a micro Moog um, and uh, see how we can uh, see how we can do things. So we're going to need, a bunch of building blocks. And so today I'm going to go through two building blocks. I thought about doing one for each, but it doesn't make any sense because one of them is trivial and, and I've covered it before and everybody and their brother knows how to do it. So I'm just going to cover it briefly. All right. So let's take a look at that first building block first. So the first building block is going to be the output. So we're going to work backwards. Okay. Uh, in this particular case, in order for us to test each section, because it's going to be outputting sound, we want to be able to hear it. And so I think the first thing we need is some way to hear it. And so I'm going to use an LM386 and a speaker, and we'll have this as the output section. Now, anytime we build an oscillator, we can hook it through here and hear it. Anytime we build an envelope generator, well, we can hear that. Um, and uh, so uh, this is what I want to build today. Now, um, instead of reinventing the wheel, I really like to, when I do projects, I like to think about the future. It's like, hmm, maybe I could design it such that this would be something you could use for multiple purposes. And uh, uh, I did this board for my wife. She had a keyboard and I wanted to have a little mixer so I could mix uh, like YouTube and the electronic piano together and hear it in the earphone. So you, it, was, it, was a, it was a mixer, a ch cheapy little mixer. And so I, I designed this little circuit. And uh, the circuit has, um, oh, this is not the right, this is not the right board. <laughs> That's interesting. I did another revision of this one. This one's completely, completely just a proto board, but uh, let's show the board. The board that I did do is this one here. Um, it's the same form function. I guess I, I guess I was thinking ahead. I'd have a proto board that I could design other things on and then I would have this board, which had the uh, uh, audio output. So anyway, I forgot, I forgot all about this board. I have to I think about that one. Okay. So anyway, this board has, uh, it was for stereo. And so there's two sections of three, uh, LM 386s. So each for right and left and everything. So I'm going to repurpose this board. I'm just going to run it mono. So I'm just going to load one part in and, um, I will bring in a source and then we can hear it. And I've added a, uh, I've added a volume adjust. Okay. So this is what I have on that board. 
uh, the volume adjust is just a uh, resistive divider, 10k pot, comes in, it gets uh, capacitively coupled into the 386. There's some bypassing on the 386, and then there's some. Um, uh, there's a funny little section on the output that's a 10 ohm and a, I think it's 0 0.047 microfarads is the ideal, but I just put in a 0.1 because that's what I've got. And, and it's fine. It, it just, it keeps the, I believe it keeps the op amp happy because it has this inductive load out here. And uh, that's what this is for. All right, and then it's capacitively coupled to the uh, to the speaker, 47, 47 microfarads here, 47 microfarads here, and uh, that's what that board has on it now, okay? Okay, so that's, that's a building block number one. Okay, now let's talk about building block number two. So this is building block number two. It is a uh, NPN output, so it's amplifying something and then sending it out. And what it's amplifying is the current into the base of the transistor, the current here. Well, where's that current coming from? Well, that current's coming through this 12 volts, and it's going through a diode, and it's going into the base. And it is a, a, a Zener diode, so it will be conducting. It's an 8.6 volt Zener diode, so it will allow current to flow, even though it looks like it's in backwards, it's a Zener diode, so it will let it through. And Zener diodes work on the physics principle of uh, avalanching. Um, it's kind of a quantum mechanical thing, actually, but um, it allows, basically, it allows the diode to leak in a predictive manner <laughs> and uh, does so in a random statistical way. Um, and so because it's kind of random amounts of electrons that get to do the avalanche thing, because of this, this randomness, it generates noise. And if you generate noise and you amplify it, you will have bigger noise. <laughs> and so uh, this is what uh, I have wired up over on my breadboard. Okay, it's right here. I've got it, I got, got it hooked up right here. This is the circuit. And so we're going to take the output of the circuit and hook it up into our first amplifier, okay, our audio amplifier, and we'll get to hear, we'll get to hear what that noise sounds like, all right? So I have it over here. Here's everything going. Let me move a microphone over so you can hear it. And I'm going to turn up the, I'm going to turn up the volume. Uh, let's, let's zoom out a little bit here so you can see, you can see the speaker. All right, so, and there's the noise. And it's what's known as white noise. Uh, so white noise uh, has equal energy at all wavelengths. So if you took a picture of it on a uh, spectrum analyzer, uh, this is uh, frequency and this is amplitude, uh, it would be a straight line so that it had the same ampli amplitude at all, at all frequencies. Um, it would be, be real noisy, but it would be basically a straight line. And we need this thing to be able to operate over audio frequencies uh, randomly, and it seems like it is. So um, let's take a look at that on the oscilloscope. It's pretty interesting. All right, here's our noise on the uh, on the oscilloscope. Let's pull this down here. And you can see it's just kind of like hair. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's very, very noisy. We can, we can zoom in a little bit here, and you can see that it's very random. Get these little spikes of noise. These are the actual, you know, tunneling events that happen inside that uh, inside that uh, Zener diode. And when they go into the, uh, when those uh, little pulses of current go into the, um, the NPN transistor, I believe this is probably the Miller effect that we're looking at. It's probably these straight lines. Uh, here, let me take a single shot of one. Uh, oops, let's do it this way. Uh, there's these kind of these ramps, and I believe that's probably the capacitance of the uh, base. Um, Miller effect is the capacitance between the base and the collector. And I believe that's why you're getting these uh, straight lines uh, due to these little current spikes that the, uh, that the avalanching uh, uh, things occur. So anyway, uh, so now we have a noise source, and uh, it sounds pretty good. There you go. That's, that's that. That's what that sounds like. 
And uh, there we go. So that's our first building block, a noise source. And a lot of times uh, synthesizers will use that noise source and then filter it and make it into, into different sounds. Uh, so yeah, we're on our way.